has started. Go ahead, Rishab. I think you uh, enabled uh, screening. Uh, share, oh. share. <laughs> Once again, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, you can now share your screen, Rishab. Yes. So the, the first thing I want to discuss is the agenda, yeah. So the first thing is, so uh, so we have the fix for the Jenkins file now, so we're not running uh, the benchmarks everywhere for every PR now. Uh, one question I had related to it was, should we create a GSOC dev branch uh, where I, where I, Post where I uh, push all of my changes in the Git client plugin, not in the master directly, and work accordingly. Is that something we want to consider, or tell tell me what you, what you would hope to gain by that? Is that is your concern that you might be too disruptive on the master branch, or yes, I, I, it's it's an interesting insight. Yes, that's the only concern. And and I don't think I don't think I I would lobby. Let's let's call for the others. But as as a maintainer, I like that the changes are on the master branch because if you break something, I learn very quickly. And if it's on a separate branch, the danger is I won't learn as quickly. I won't be as useful to you. So my my personal preference for right now is let's keep using the master branch, and admit that that. That means there's, it's not free, but we will get better progress, I think, overall, if we stay on the master branch for now. But it's a valid point. If we need to, we could certainly allow a, a separate branch that you, you push to or that you submit pull requests to on, on the central repo. Uh, Justin or Omkar, any, any opinion there? Are you, I think maybe, are you proposing that you would do it on master and another branch? Uh, no. Directly um, yep. I just don't want to push my changes directly on master on a separate branch and then uh, and that branch it runs the benchmark so that it's, it's it, it is running parallelly basically it, it's just a suggestion I, I I really it's not something I have considered too much it's just a suggestion well and I mean we the only, go, sorry go Oh, I was going to say the only thing that I could see an advantage of having it also in another branch would be that if you have changes that you need to make uh, in that other branch that you could see it run in, in CI. But I think I agree with Mark too, though. Like, uh, it'd be nice to see it on master as well if we were to do that. Just to yeah, especially we, help Mr. Mark. <laughs> we, we could take a variant of that, though. We could say, hey, we're not even going to run the benchmarks on the master branch create a GSOC dev branch and only run them on the dev branch. But, but for me, it feels like, hey, I, I like knowing and I like watching the evolution. And if you break something on master, you'll get attention much, much more rapidly than, than if you break something on a separate branch. I'm, I'm very attentive to the master branch. And particularly now as we're approaching the release of Git client 3.3 and Git plugin 4.3, so it, this is a great time for you to be there so that you're getting lots of, lots of attention. Okay, okay, I understand that. So uh, the next thing then is, is something I was thinking about while uh, thinking about this issue only, the branch issue, that we currently have my benchmarks for the Git client plugin. And uh, so I was thinking, the scope of our benchmarking project is to basically understand if we have a faster implementation for certain scenarios and then enhance them in the plugin. And we also, so do we want, so uh, will we also uh, maintain the benchmarks on the CIA Jenkins infrastructure after think, we, we use the benchmarks for uh, this project? we want to keep those benchmarks on the uh, Jenkins infrastructure, right? So if we are doing that for Git client plugin, what I was thinking, uh, so my uh, concern there is that for, for the Git client plugin, I, I don't see uh, rapid changes in that uh, repository where benchmarking could help that much as compared to the Git plugin 
where the changes which would be much more which might where pe- developers might benefit with uh, a performance uh, benchmark but the concern there another concern there is that we are uh, conducting micro benchmarking here and when we shift to git plugin uh, for an example if i want to benchmark uh, the checkout step that includes a lot of functions and lot of api calls so it i think uh, the definition of micro benchmarking doesn't apply to that to that whole process but to have uh, a benchmark which would uh, which would create a reference for developers when they change the checkout process for some reason and they have a reference and uh, and that would help them a lot but but uh, conceptually i'm not sure if the micro benchmarking principles are violated when we are trying to uh record and measure such a such a big step should can we do that should we do do that or should we break the checkout step into some pro, some stages where we can benchmark it like we are benchmarking the operations we are doing that in the git client plugin but i'm not sure if the git fetch step is going to be updated that much so the benchmarks we we have the results but i i i'm not i don't understand how the benchmarks help that much in that case so, so yes yeah. the i think well there was a recent webinar presented uh where by uh, by someone from the oh where were they from it was about a week ago there was a bench um, um presentation was made where they they were they showed using performance data historically to help detect flaws in in something um so i think your idea is valid however part of me says this is this is probably the wrong time to scope creep your particular project the the benchmarking inside git client still has several different areas that probably justify investigation after we get fetch understood and after we get it to the point where it's running reliably and that we we've compared its behavior on power pc on system 390 on on windows on linux and we've understood gathered some historical data so that you could present hey look here's the behavior and all these different platforms have these curves that the shape looks like this that for me is already so valuable to to do that kind of thing that i would ignore git plugin for now just because i think we've got so much to learn on git client okay that that seems fair enough mark i understand that yeah it, it's not that it's not that it's not a great idea i think it's a brilliant idea but my suspicion is that we've got an awful lot of things that have to happen still for us to say yes we we got this all the way to getting the value out of the benchmarking that we wanted to get okay yeah i understand that i think that would be a good follow up uh thing if we end up uh getting far enough along that, that you would be able to use the principles you learned in this one and then apply it to the git plugin because i think i agree that i agree that uh it's nice to have metrics especially long term so you can tell like what kind of small things and i think this is what you're getting at also when you, when you see a, a change that's made a big spike then you know that's more obvious than a longer term oh i think at some point in this last year <laughs> we had a we had a performance spike so yeah for for as an example the place where you, where what you're suggesting might be particularly useful um one of the one of the problems we have in in the project is that it supports a wide wide range of git versions all the way from the git that shipped with centos 7 1.8 that is now 6 or 7 years old to the most recent git 2.27 and it it allegedly supports all of the versions in between but you can just be confident that 1.8 has a very different behavior performance wise mm-hmm. feature wise capabilities compared to 2.27 and there are options that we we don't yet use in the brand new versions because we're allowing ourselves to use the old ver- to support the old versions eventually i'd love to get to a mode where we say we're going to drop support for git 
we're going to drop support for Git versions up to 2.7, for instance. But in order to do that, we'd have to have a compelling reason which says, because we gain these things. And your benchmarks could tell us, here are some of the things we gain. So again, why I think your idea is good, but I, I think it's the wrong time for us to approach it. Let's get, get the Git client benchmarking understood and and implemented okay I, I get it okay so the next thing uh, on the agenda is progress on the issue so uh, first i think i should uh, i should uh, should we see the code should we see the code right now or is it something uh, i i can raise the prs and then you guys can review it should we spend time on that you're actually Just, i I want you to brag first about the, the Windows fix that you did. So that, that, that before you show any code, even the test case failures on Windows, you've resolved, right? So, uh, so uh, you're talking about the assertion errors, right? Right. Uh, so that was resolved by, by the thing you gave Mark uh, on, for, for the, on uh, I think, uh, uh, in the morning, you gave me the uh, solution for it, so I just I just did that. I, I there was nothing novel in <laughs> in fixing that te those test failures. But I realized that uh, maybe we can uh, find a better way to assert uh, the double that we don't have the double fetch fetches now. One of the simplest way I could I could think about was to not uh, not check if git fetch is there or not just check uh, before git fetch it logs an info that uh, it is fetching the upstream repository so i think i can count that and that is agnostic to the platform that would be agnostic to windows or linux or any platform mm -hmm. so that is the simplest thing i i could think of to just count that so i would have just one count after my fix and before my fix it would be two so, so I was thinking of implementing that right now I have done what you gave basically matching the pattern and using reject. So, so I was do, I was thinking of doing that. And, um, so with the, so we still have one test case failure with windows, which, uh, me and Mark, we're going to explore and debug. And that's it for the test case failures right now. I, and, uh, yeah. Huh. So, so the, the one remaining test case failure actually is not Windows specific. It's I see it fail also on my Linux environment. Um, so, but but that's a relief because the Windows specific one had had me completely perplexed. Why why Windows? What's so magical about Windows? And this the the one remaining failure is both visible on Windows and on Linux. I'm confident we'll see it anywhere because there's there's got to be some fundamental, some fundamental thing that we're missing. Just like you found two days ago, you pointed out to us that the extensions were just not being added to the clone command. Yes, but but Mark, it was um, the build is successful in my look on my local machine, Mac OS system. It's successful. No tests are failing in that machine. Try try merging the master branch. Just just to be uh -huh. sure, try merging the master branch. It may be that you're you're clean before checkout. To, well, I I don't yet know what it is, but I definitely see it on my on my Linux box. But it, but it is also succeeding in the uh, Jenkins infrastructure Linux instances, both Linux instances. If you can, if you check. Are you sure? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I I'll, I'll show you. Oh, and master. Yes, uh, yeah, I yeah. This is the branch. Maybe Mac is special now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's it's especially a Berkeley Linux. That's right. That's about how special it is. It's a special Berkeley Linux. Special Berkeley Linux, for sure. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, and you're right. Wow. Okay. Why do I see it consistently on my my Linux computer? I just ran it minutes before this meeting and saw the failure. No failure there. Interesting. It's not failing in my on my machine and on those Linux instances. So first, I initially I thought it's something related to Windows. I could not understand because it's Maybe versions. Um, is it a version? Uh, is this one using the 
the system git or the jig git? Uh, it's, let's see, the failure is using, it's get S, get SCM test, so it's using CLI git, right? I All the tests, don't they use JGIT? Uh, no, I don't know how it could. Since if it were using JGIT, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to assert on the double fetch because you were asserting for specifically the command git space fetch and jgit does not That's echo good. git fetch mm -hmm. True. but so i'm pretty sure that it's using cli git but it's a valid question justin and a really good one for me to double check to be sure that it's using let's see is git scm test the one that is parameterized Extend one thought that, that i have is that uh sometimes if you rely on the text of a <laughs> of an output and that uh, the thing that puts out that output may change over time. And then you get fun little test things. And then I'm especially kind of like concerned by what Mark had said in terms of the spread of Git client versions, which totally makes sense that you would support that wide of a spread. Um, but perhaps yeah. they've changed the text in, uh, in the Git fetch output. Yeah, in this case, the the fetch that he's the the text he's asserting on it's a good point. It's a very good point. The text that he's asserting on is actually text generated by the by the Git client plugin itself, not by okay. command line Git. So it's a Ignore. it's a diag no no no. It's a very good point. It's a diagnostic output provided by the the plugin that happens to be a copy of the arguments it passes to Git fetch. Much safer. Well, sort of. Yeah, it, it has exactly, yeah. you, you, you hit it exactly right that it has. Yeah, so I, Rishab, I definitely see the same failure. Let's see what my status is. Yeah, so I did do a merge from the master branch, but all that changes is uh, brings in some documentation changes compared to what you had. So I, I don't think that alters your, should alter the behavior at all. So this will be a fun investigation. Thank you for, for giving us an opportunity to, to look at something um, together that's gonna be interesting. I, I yes. don't think we should keep you awake significantly longer. It's getting late in your day, right? We're, we're probably at, at- It's 8.20 it? right now, 8.20 yeah. p.m. Okay, so it's, not so Rishab and I were Justin Rishab and I were talking ten hours ago, and he's <laughs> he's not slept since then. I had a good night's sleep. So <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> okay, so um, so this is the test case failures. After this, um, the next thing is that I have to create test cases for the for all of the addition of extensions I've done, and. Uh, so I was, I was seeing that we don't have any tests for uh, pruning stale branches. So uh, there is no test for that. So I would gladly add a before and an after test for, uh, for that feature. And then um, for pruning tags, that for that also I'm going to add automated test cases. And uh, for the clean before checkout, do we need to add uh, uh, do we need to add explicit? Because I think there was an ex existing test case which uh, pointed out uh, to me that I am I'm, I'm, I'm missing something. So do we need uh, two more tests which explicitly, one more test or maybe two which explicitly tell us that, okay, this fix is doing this? No? No, not for, not for me. I think, I think yes, I, I'm embarrassed that we got lucky, but I'm glad that we got lucky now you're going to, to reduce our, our odds of being lucky in the future by adding more tests to reduce the lucky the reliance on luck and instead rely on skill of tests. Okay, okay, so and also yeah, I, I yeah yeah just yeah I'd say I wouldn't worry about retrofitting tests. Well, unless I, it's something that we're going to change to. Yeah, I, I hang my head in shame that there were no tests on prune branches, but I think that's older functionality. I'm really embarrassed that, that it didn't catch it on prune stale tags because that was recently added. That hasn't even been released yet. That'll first come out in 4.3. So that's brand new functionality that I missed getting a test into it. 
So thank you for catching it. Okay. And uh, after that, I, I need to create a benchmark for, uh, for to point out the performance difference between the double and the single fetch. Uh, I actually have a benchmark, but it's not working right now. It worked before, <laughs> during the proposal I was creating, it's not working right now, so I'm going to fix that. And uh, so I have some, uh, so I, after the fix, I did, did a few, uh, so I, I, I put system.nanotime in the retrieve changes stage of the checkout. I want to show using the code where I've done it. Uh, yes, so this is the stage where we basically call git fetch twice. So I, uh, I just did this to check uh, once I uh, put my fix, what is the time difference, what is happening. So the result was a difference of 20 seconds for, uh, so I ran it, so I, uh, I built it for Jenkins IO repository, which is around 40 MB, right Mark? Uh, yes, yeah. So. Uh, for, for, for that uh, repository, the difference is around 20 seconds after, uh, after fixing it, which, which is okay, right? That's which, substantial. That's, I expected it to be near zero because I think of fetch to get nothing should be pretty cheap. So that's, that's quite impressive. To be able to save 20 seconds, lots of people should be very happy. Yeah. But... Uh, could, is it is it possible that this is something related to my machine? It could the time difference or the time it could be corrupted because I am using system dot nano time and I am uh, performing it on my local machine. So uh, we would have this time difference or so so the answer to the could could a benchmark be skewed by something is always yes. But in this case, the difference seems large enough that it's unlikely any skewing inside your system is really impacting that number. So, so yes, could the benchmark be skewed? Absolutely. Uh, I suspect if we run these same kinds of tests multiple times, we'll get repeated or in multiple locations, those kind of things, we'll get repeated evidence that you've got exactly the, uh, what you're observing is exactly correct. Taking out that second fetch has a, a very distinct detectable improvement performance. Okay. And I also uh, tried profiling the Jenkins for by uh, adding a custom build of my plugin inside the plugin directory, but uh, I'm not, I'm not able to get any difference in the thread dump here. It's, it's, it's the same. I'm not sure if, uh, if Jenkins, I, I saw the I saw the logs when the Jenkins instance was starting up. So it was using the current uh, uh, the plugin Git plugin I provided to it. But um, but I didn't change the Git client plugin. Could it could it be because of that? Because um, because my fix is also using some functionalities of the Git client plugin, uh, which which I, which is a uh, which I have updated because it, it's not available in the uh, in this Jenkins repo, right? Uh, from where we are downloading the plugins. Well, so it's, so how did you in my M2 repository? Correct. How did you how did you launch Jenkins here? Did you use Maven HPI colon run or some mm -hmm. other technique to launch the WAR file? I I use Java hyphen Java Jenkins WAR. Oh, okay, good. Well, so then having done that, you'll find um, I, if you look in the Jenkins in the man in the system information for your Jenkins while it's running it will show you what its Jenkins home directory is. You find that yeah. home directory, copy your git client plugin.hpi file into that, that directory's plugins directory as a .jpi and restart okay. Jenkins and it will now use your new git client. So you, you then have the convenience of, you can put both a new git client and a new git plugin into that same location and it will use them both. Okay, I did that for Git Club plugin, but I did not do it for Git client. So I like yeah. do that. So so do the same for Git client. See, I would expect that if you didn't do it for Git client, you wouldn't get the remove of redundant fetches, would you? Because the remove redundant fetches is only implemented in Git client plugin. In the Git plugin. Oh, okay, great. My mistake. Git that's plugin. great. So it's that's the implementation of that is actually in Git plugin, not Git client. Git client, yes. 
Great. Okay. Thanks. Excuse my forgetting. Yeah. That's okay. So, uh, so here you can see that we have two gate fetches. Actually, we have multi multiple gate fetches. I don't understand. So I I think I need to understand the uh, the thread down more because I, I'm seeing two fetches here, and then I'm also seeing a gate fetch after this. Just one minute. Where is it? Not able to find it right now. I saw. So, so I have two uh, recordings. The f this one is from uh, before the fix. So here you can see two more. Fe so two fetches there, and then we go up where it is actually using fetch to yeah. Two more fetches there. So this is something I I don't understand. Is it is it because it is it paralyzing? Is it because of multi-threading, or why would this happen that I'm seeing three, four, five fetches? Are there any submodules? Uh, no. no. Okay. So, is is the is the job you're testing a pipeline job or just a freestyle job? Freestyle job. Okay. All right. So then, then you you if if it were a, had been a pipeline job, it it would have potentially been loading pipeline shared libraries. So that might have explained multiple fetches. In this case, I, I don't have a good explanation for why it would do four fetches instead of one or two, depending on whether you had redundant fetches removed or not. So I, I don't know. That's a good question. Okay, so maybe I need yeah, to maybe look at what the screen. differences are in the in the commands. Now, well, so, so I guess you I assume that you do not have um, wipe workspace extension no, added no, and you added. don't have calculate change log uh, and you don't have any of the other you, that you've kept Actually, the number of extensions very simple extension. yes it's no extension it's just to check out great so, so certainly worth investigating i i don't yeah. directly know oh yeah this is why you would see that i have i'll have to look it's it's a good question okay i'm going to investigate more this so uh so i think the tasks i now uh, have are the first one is to uh, raise the prs with the automated tests the second one is to uh, create the benchmark so that we have uh, a good visual report of, of how this this fix has improved the performance and um, and the third one would be to find out it's it's the same i had on wednesday is to find out a way to implement the opt in feature we want to include for the performance enhancement as an extension which you we were talking about so yeah so i'm going to do that during that during this weekend hopefully right, yeah. i i'll raise the prs yeah i wonder okay this is where justin and omkar get to chime in uh, part of me is tempted to say hey, should we implement it as just a single global switch, which is go back to the old way of doing things or keep doing things the new way? So, so there, is, there are global switches you can set on the Git plugin that are available through the Manage Jenkins page. And there are relatively few of them right now. Configuration username, um, whether or not it should create new users, and one other. But, but Tool? Is it Git tool? Selection of Git tool, selection of Git tool, Git or JGit. No, it's this is, is that, this is this okay. is this is at the here. Maybe maybe what we can do is, if you don't mind, I'll just share with you so that you can see it, so you know where to look. Okay, sure. Not. Because I'm prone to say, you know what? Maybe this is so valuable that we should make it the new default and only allow people to go back to the old default, the old way of doing things, if they find some catastrophic problem because making people turn it on will slow the adoption of it, of it being switched on. The, but if we don't allow them to turn it off, we may break them catastrophically. <laughs> and then we'll be upset. <laughs> right, exactly. So if you want to stop sharing briefly, I can show you where, yeah. where they, the, uh, 
Uh, I saw that those had stand air, STD air and STD out. I wonder if those are binding to two different uh, streams in Java. Maybe that's why that's showing up twice. Oh, oh yes, yes, you're right. Look at what it says there, standard out copier, standard error copier, and they are in fact two different file descriptors. Very good. Justin, you win bonus points. I think you're right. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> okay. You might want to double check that because that's yeah, uh, me at about and, 8 a.m. And, and it has to read two different file descriptors, right? Because the Git command line Git really writes some things to standard out and some things to standard error. And we bind both of them so we get everything. Uh, very good. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So, so yeah, so another so, error and you should be good. Yes, so I would have four fetch statements there. Okay. Understood. Oh, sorry, sorry, let's, uh, right uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so okay. here's my share screen, this one. Okay, so what you see here, you should see, do you see my Jenkins instance? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, good. So if we do manage Jenkins, system, configure system, and this particular system has several thousand jobs on it and a bunch of global configuration, so it'll take a while to load. So while it's loading, what will appear if we search for the string git space plugin on this page, git space plugin, you'll see this section here, this block of global configuration settings. So I can set the who, who should, what should the username be for anything that is committed. And this is one example, show the entire commit summary and changes of a place where a new behavior was desired and we allowed people if they didn't like it to, to check this thing off. So it was, so, and this is, so if you look for that string in the, in the, uh, in the source code, you'll see a pattern that's used to implement that kind of thing. And it may be that at least my initial take, having, having seen the work you're doing and the results you're getting that, we think removing redundant fetch should be completely transparent to the user. And if it truly is transparent to the user, then there's no reason not to just have a switch here which says, um, enable redundant fetch, and it defaults to false, <laughs> right? It's, it's, it'd be the slow me down please mode for compatibility. <laughs> okay, yeah, we could do that, yes. Although I don't understand why would people choose it if, if you're not breaking any use case? Well, well, the notion is we, we broke their use case and they don't have time to wait for a fix. Yeah. Indeed, it would yeah. give them an option to escape from, right. from it uh, rather than having to it's go down that like path. like a fo fallback or something. From, yeah. yeah. I guess one of the things that I, I don't know, I don't know if it would be nice to have it both in admin and and in user space, just in case it's a particular repository that's breaking and all the other ones, they want the performance stuff. But uh, then we're starting to get into gold plating and stuff like that too. Right. But Ju Justin, that's... <laughs> Omkar, you are welcome to drop. You don't need to remain yeah. on. I think we've okay. finished. Rishab, anything else we need to do? No, no, I think it's, I've discussed what I want to do for today. Excellent. We will meet again Wednesday. Hope that we've yep. got solutions and we'll talk about the next steps then. Okay. Sure. Thanks, everybody. Bye, guys. Okay.